you often hear the word or the words climate adaptation. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? It means you realize that something is going on and you try to adapt to protect yourself from it. And a big part of what we need to mm -hmm. do and something I've been advocating for since I became mayor in 2018 is to ensure that we have local area planning, mm -hmm. land use planning, and we use building permits to protect people by ensuring that they don't build houses, properties in areas which are disaster prone. Mm -hmm. I went to Looking Town yesterday and like many, many informal settlements, it's not motorable. So that begins to give you a picture of where it is. You drive up and you can drive beyond, but we drove up to um, Kisimento mm -hmm. and then the fire truck was because they were going to collect the, the, the last body. Right. The fire truck could not go beyond that point um, because of the steepness of the hill. So I joined them. I got out of my vehicle and walked with them. It also gave me an opportunity to walk with the counselor mm -hmm. who'd spent, Ma'am Counselor Mafere Kamara, who'd spent the best part of the morning there and had been just returned home. So mm -hmm. I caught up with her and we walked. I'm raising this right. because you walk along a narrow path, um, which in itself is incredibly dangerous, really steep edge. And what does this all show you? It shows us that people are making decisions on their own mm -hmm. about where they live and doing so in a manner which is putting their lives at risk as well as the lives of others mm. at risk. Somebody said uh, on an audio I heard this morning, that many of the properties that are built in hazard prone areas are built by landlords who don't live there. They're rented out. Whether you're on the coastal slum, mm. any of our coastal communities, you know, uh, um, or on these steep mountains, but the destruction, not just of life and property right at that point, mm -hmm. but further downstream is something that we can't afford to have continue. So if you were around anywhere yesterday and even this morning, mm -hmm. because the debris is still everywhere, right. what you will see, what you will see most is brown gravel, red dotty. Yeah. Where is it coming from? It's coming from our hills because of the level of deforestation, because of the fact that when people are building, there are no regulations, mm -hmm. there are no... Uh, um, there's no, nothing imposed on them to maintain trees, to maintain green cover. And this needs to come from a position of legislative authority. Mm. Just last month, I was in Tanzania. I was in Arusha for a meeting. And it's so green. I sat in the hotel room looking out the window, and my heart was literally breaking mm. because this was Freetown. That lush green expanse hills covered mm. with green vegetation and I actually asked my hosts about it mm. so I said um so can you just tell me like how does it work in 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 Arusha um you know in Tanzania generally mm -hmm. you know it's it's so green and I don't see the deforestation that I see in my country mm. and they said very simple you can't cut a tree without a permit from the local council and for the local council to give you a permit to cut that tree, you need to plant 10 other trees. But you don't just plant the trees. They need to reach five foot, a height of five feet, before you're allowed to cut the tree. So they really built into a system, of not just the legislation, mm -hmm. but a culture. So people have a deep respect. They make billions a year from tourism and, and, that, and that, it's because they have something that people want to see. That's literally what I want, I, I want to ask. The question now is, I mean, we see annually, uh, it's like a fixture in the month of August. August. And in Sierra Leone, we either experience flash floods, mudslides, or other form of natural disasters in the month of August. So it's a fixture for Sierra Leone um, annually. But we've always identified some of um, the underlying causes, some of which are monumental. 
But in addressing those challenges, I mean, that has been the biggest problem. So we continue to see people, I mean, construct houses where they should not. And some, sometimes I have, I have seen firsthand where, I mean, even the most powerful and most influential people in society are the ones going beyond the green belt, constructing powerful houses, um, like, it, like it happened at Motome some five years ago. It, it, it continues, do not cut trees, but we see people cutting down trees, the very mighty and powerful as well. But sometimes we pay attention to, to those of us who come from the rural areas. I mean, we do not have place to stay. All we do is to just go and brush the, the bushes, erect our sharks, and then we leave there. How do we get the relevant authorities? You've, you've just cited what is happening in Tanzania. How do we get the relevant authorities? Whether it's the Environment Protection Agency, it's the Ministry of Local Government, um, the Freetown City Council, the National Protected um, Area Authority. How do we get all of these bodies, um, seat, plan, and come up with a strategy that protects Sierra Leone's environment? So I think there's a very simple starting point. Which is? I mentioned that in Arusha, you apply to the local council, mm -hmm. not just for cutting down trees, but for building houses. Mm. You know, uh, um, the, what you've just done, mentioning all these agencies, potentially it's part of the problem. In 2004, when the Local Government Act mm -hmm. was, was passed mm -hmm. in Parliament, um, building on the best practice from so many places around the world, various functions mm -hmm. of government were devolved to local authorities. And there was good reason for it. Mm -hmm. You devolved to local authorities the things that local authorities do best, the things at the ground level, the things where there is a need for direct contact mm -hmm. with communities, um, with residents, and where, you, where you're able to sort of spread your reach. That's why you delegate down, you devolve down. And one of the key uh, um, functions that the 2004 devolves to the local councils mm -hmm is land use planning mm. and building permit issuance. Land use planning and building permit issuance. And I have been going on and on about this because it's simple, Samuel. This is a tool of urban management. You have a city and you are tasked to look after the welfare of the citizens, of the residents of that city. Mm. That's what the act says. Mm -hmm. A key way for you to be able to do that is to ensure that the landscape, the actual physical ground in that, including the waterways, are protected. In doing so, you're protecting lives. So, for example, if we have a situation such as the one we see daily, like you've mm -hmm. just mentioned, mm. right now, to, w there are times when we act outside of this power because we just have to. Mm. So there's a construction going on in Brookfields right now, on a water, in a waterway, a mm. major waterway. Mm. And that person has a permit. But we've put a sign to knock it down. Because I was just going to ask, I mean, with all of these things happening, like you mentioned, you're in charge of the city. I mean, Fritonians voted you to lead them. I mean, create a better environment, environment. and a safer one um, at that. The sanitization of Freetown, I mean, is given to you by Fritonians. So... In essence, are you saying the legislative frameworks do not support they the do. initiative? They uh do. -huh. The law does. So what the is the problem? The practice doesn't. Mm. So um, in 2004, when these functions were stated, they're mm -hmm. at the back. Um, then the annex of the Local Government Act, if anybody wants to have a look, yeah. this is actually in that annex. They state the specific functions of central government, which were devolved to the sure. councils. Mm. Now, this devolution did not happen. When the New Direction Manifesto was published and was presented um, during the 2018 elections, mm -hmm. one of the things that was very exciting was that it said that within one year, the Bureau administration would devolve all the remaining functions. Mm -hmm. And true to, to, to the uh, uh, um, promise, to the promise mm -hmm. there was a press release by the Office of the Vice President in his capacity as chairman of the Interministerial Committee, mm -hmm. that press release was issued on the 7th of March, 2019, and I still have it. Right. You know, um, 
And that press release sought to do what the manifesto had said, mm -hmm. to devolve. Unfortunately, um, within, I think it was about two weeks, if, if not less, mm. um, the then Minister of Lands was on radio saying that he would absolutely not devolve land use planning. Um, and so it has been since. But, so well, effect, but land use planning is part of the devolved function. Yes, but it's not devolved. So what, what do I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, you, it, it, it's untenable for Frita City Council to go on radio and say, this is what the law says, therefore we're going to take over. Mm -hmm. When government is saying, we are not devolving, we're holding on to this, we're having workshops, we're going through a process, mm -hmm. and that process has gone on for four and a half years. But in the meantime, there's been an audit of building permit issuance, as, uh, what do they call them? Um, process audits mm. uh, by the audits services Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. um, and a oh, performance audit, that's the right term, performance audit. And that performance audit showed that 85%, and this is available on their website, you know, I, I downloaded a copy, 85% of the properties that they, that they chose in their sample did not have building permits. Mm. But Simon, we don't really need um, Auditor General to tell us that, do we? Mm. Because we see all around us. Yesterday when we were at Culvert Community, um, I was with Christopher yes. and Aki from AYV, and I showed them, you see the houses that are being built in that mm -hmm. waterway, leading to the flooding. And somewhere like Kanike has never flooded before. This yesterday was the first time, or oh no, the... Uh, um, week before, the mm -hmm. week before, the, the, right. the rains of, of the previous week, mm -hmm. was the first time it had flooded in their memory, in their memory. But why is it happening? Because people have now banked mm -hmm. the waterway mm -hmm. into the ocean, literally have come with tires, with, sa with, with dirt. Um, they put sticks and they are closing the space between Kisi Dockyard and Kanike. And consequently, with the river closed, when the water comes with force, it overflows. Mm. The same is happening in Aberdeen. The same is happening in Bottom, in bottom Oku, where literally the coast, the mangroves, are being turned into housing. Mm -hmm. Council has the capacity because if someone says you don't have the capacity, well, I say, well, give us, let's try the councils. Because clearly, it's not working. You cannot expect a ministry at UWE Building to be able to implement land mm -hmm. use planning and building permit issuance mm -hmm. across the country. Mm -hmm. Because this should be happening everywhere. It's not just a Freetown problem. When I speak to colleagues, they also have challenges in other parts of the country with people building houses in swamps. Fundamentally, this is one of the major problems. This, the this for factor. me, is uh, a major challenge. Uh, and it's not are, the only one. Yes, I understand. But it's well, a I mean, very, one of the, very yeah. significant so, one. So, uh, and you, you feel you're, you're, you're challenged or you're being handicapped because, I mean, that function has not been devolved to, um, to the local government or local council. And, and the, the truth is, mm. Samuel, it's not about council doing it, although no. I, we, you know, the reason it was in the act mm -hmm. is because councils are best place to do it. Mm. If you live in the UK, if you live in the US, if you, you, know, if you live in um, Namibia, mm. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking Ghana, you know, you, the, the council gives the permit. Mm. The council gives the permit. So because the council is local, you know, and these are local functions. We, we had... Um, we are working on a World Bank project, mm. which has been designed, Russell P, mm -hmm. a resilient urban Sierra Leone project, which has as one of its tenants um, the, this, this, the need for this to be devolved. Mm. Um, so there's a strengthening of the um, capacity at council, which has happened. There's, we have a whole team, mm. um, a team that's been interacting over the last few years with the Institute of Architects, with the Institute of Engineers, and have actually designed a land use planning framework, a local area planning framework, building on the structural area plan that was done in 2013, mm -hmm. 14, funded by the EU. So there's a basis of this plan. Mm. And people who say, oh, it's too late, Freetown don't pull. Do you know, Freetown, you pull more and more every day. Mm. So why don't we try and stop the destruction rather than just say, throw our hands up in the air, let this continue. As this continues with 
the global dynamics mm -hmm. also continuing. We have a recipe for disaster and for more loss. Mm -hmm. Whether people are banking rivers, look at, just, just take any river, take mm -hmm. any, any stream that you remember as a, as a boy. Did you grow up in Freetown? Yes. Where did you grow up? I grew up along um, Lomley. Along Lomley. Well, think now of that area. Think of the Juba Bridge mm. and how water used to flow mm. through it. Think of when you're, when you're now at the new bridge, the Atlantic Bridge, and you're going to Goodies. Mm -hmm. Think of that span of water just three, four years ago and see how it is now filled with housing. Mm. Council cannot act mm. on this because the mandate is not with council. And what is really, really significant, I feel, is there is still a chance to stop it. You know, I'm thinking, be, be, being a Fritonian, now, um, when I want to vote, I, I have to look at um, policies, look at issues, and then I have to realize that, oh, the Freetown City Council, according to um, the devolved functions, is in charge of planning the city, I mean, sanitizing the city, I mean, even the issuance of building permits. But um, the legal frameworks are supportive of that, according to you, but in practice, no. Um, so, what, what has been your push? Because at the end of the day, as a Fritonian, I'll come back to the mayor, I'll blame you. You're yep. not doing this, you're supposed to yep. do this. So, so what is happening? Yep, so my push has been letters, has been meetings, has been press releases, mm. has been conversations, and as I say constantly, I continue to advocate. Mm. I have met with so many times with the local government uh, um, um, team at Freetown City, at um, Ministry of Finance, mm -hmm. um, the Russell P project, you know, if there was ever an opportunity mm -hmm. for us to just embrace this and move on. Mm -hmm. We've done presentations. We've had meetings with Ministry of Lands. We've had meetings with Ministry of Finance. Mm -hmm. We've had ministries, meetings with Ministry of Local Government. We've had meetings all together. Mm -hmm. We've had meetings with the World Bank. It's about political will. It's a decision. Mm -hmm. It's a decision. There was a decision taken and it was reversed. It's a decision. If it's a question of capacity, mm. then I would beg the question, or I think that would beg the question, what is the capacity that we have today? Mm. Um, there, was a, there was, at one point, the argument was the staff in the ministry don't want to move to the councils. And our response was, that's fine. We can staff the function from within the council. Mm. We don't need the ministry staff to come. But on the other hand, if the ministry staff are staff, um, and uh, just, so, so, just so listeners understand that concept. Yeah. So devolution is the devolving of resources and staff. So for example, um, in theory, the sports, we have sports uh, as a devolved function. We have a gentleman mm -hmm. from the Ministry of Sports who is uh, um, aligned with council and does activities at council level mm -hmm. across the different councils, mm -hmm. you know, in respect of sports. So that, that's the concept that, oh, well, if you devolve it, the staff need to come and the staff don't want to come. The staff don't need to come if the staff don't want to come. But I would have thought that if the you're... The saying the staff, I mean, the staff does not want to. But, if, but I would have thought if you're in charge, you instruct the staff to come. And if they don't want to come, we, we as council have said, through the resources, and we've, we've also resourced... Uh, uh, mobilized. So GIZ um, through, the, through the city of Mannheim has provided us with um, planning staff, um, develop, you know, urban planning staff. Mm -hmm. The Russell P project has done that. We actually have a whole team. And like I said, they have done plans. We were very excited with the Russell P project mm. to actually try to plan the one area that was left in Freetown that was still relatively undeveloped, mm. which was Allentown. So when the project started in 2018, Allentown was identified by the project, named in the project as an area that we could actually implement mm -hmm. a local area plan. And what's, what does that mean? When you say land use planning, perhaps people don't understand. It'd be useful for me to maybe take a second and just explain. Go ahead. So you look and you say, where, where do we see this community going in the future? Where will we put the roads? We'll put sites and um, si we'll do sites and services, mm -hmm. right? So we'll put roads here. We'll put space for a school here because the you, the population is growing. We'll have the clinic here or a hospital here. You actually design 
the area, houses here. You, you, you actually, you know, you plot it, mm -hmm. not just to plot to give, but actually with roads, with electricity, with water. That's how you do a local area plan. Um, and Allentown in 2018 mm -hmm. was still pretty much very sparsely populated. Mm. But here we are now without any land use planning, without any local area plan, Allentown's gone. Um, and so we see the continuation of this. So you've mm. got on the one hand, because you mentioned this, and I want to come back to yeah. it. On the one hand, you talked about the people with the money. Yeah. Building the big houses, building within the green belt. And then the people without mm. the money who are just finding a place to lay their heads mm -hmm. and finding themselves in precarious situations, like in Looking Town yesterday, mm -hmm. where even as we stood at the site of the destroyed homes mm. that were covered in mud, as we looked up, we could see a boulder, huge boulder, and it looked like nothing was holding it mm. except clay. And so that's a ticking time bomb down That's already. a ticking time bomb, and they're ticking time bombs all over the city. Mm. We're not the only city that has um, this kind of topography. If you go to Kigali, another beautiful city like Arusha, mm. another very green city, again, the local council um, organizes and plans development. Mm. They terrace the hills so that you don't have this steep gradients that we have. They terrace the hills and then they plot where homes should be built mm. in Cape Town because we've also got to think that's maybe for those who can afford it, but what about for those who can't? That's where, again, there need to be land policies and this is where the ministry would definitely be coming in. There need to be land policies that actually have a way of making land accessible to those who don't have the, the means to build the big houses on the hills, but who are also coming to Freetown. And mm -hmm. it's ironic mm. when the census says that our population is reduced by 42 and a mm. half percent. Mm. If you were in Looking Town yesterday, mm. um, or if you were down in Culvert or in Kanike, mm. you would feel the evidence um, that suggests that those numbers are not right. Mm. But what, what, coming back to the point at hand, we need to be able to plan. And planning is done at local level. Ponzi, are you there with us? Yes, good morning. Wake up, Sierra Leone. Um, thank you for accepting to speak to us in sh um, such a short notice. But um, we just had a conversation with the mayor of Freetown, Yvonne Soya, um, telling us that some of the fundamental problems why we encounter flash floods annually, mudslide and other natural disasters is because um, people are given building permits to, to erect um, whether formal or informal um, settlement or structures in places that they should not erect those structures. First off, and, and again, sorry, that um, the issuance of building permits is a devolved function, but the Ministry of Lands um, said that um, they would not devolve that function to the local councils. First off, what is really responsible why the Ministry of Lands um, has decided not to devolve um, one of the functions, um, one of the devolved functions to the council. When it, in, in 2019, there was a, um, a press release by um, the office of the vice president devolving um, those functions to local councils. Many thanks to you, Samuel White Bangora, for contacting me to respond on this um, important issue on behalf of the Ministry of Land, Housing and Country Planning. What I would say as an introductory remark is that um, the only way we will be able to solve the numerous problems we are faced with as a nation is for our leaders to be honest, is for our leaders to stop the blame game, is for our leaders to start to look into what we call responsible and servant leadership. Because in a situation like this, where we have lost lives, and where we find ourselves in a mess, where in the current mess that we find ourselves as a nation, the best way to solve those issues is for the politicians themselves and the leaders to be honest. 
So at a time like this, when we are mourning the loss of Sierra Leoneans that have lost their lives um, during the flash floods yesterday, I think we owe it to the people of this country to be honest and not to be casting blames where blames are not supposed to be cast. So now to respond to the issue specifically, yes, um, there is a local council act, and that act has devolved the functions of um, building permits, for example, to the local councils. But um, now taking a retrospective look at um, that particular act, you want to ask the question if Sierra Leone as a country was ready in the first place to devolve um, certain functions to the Freetown City Council as contained in that act. And the answer is a definitely no. And the mayor of the Freetown City Council will tell you that for sure. Why is so I, 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 I'm, for, 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 for clarity purpose, are you saying the, um, the councils do not have the capacity, the technical know-how for the issuance of um, building permits? Why well, basically that's the major issue, and that was where I was coming to. Go ahead. Freetown City Council does not even have the capacity as we speak, with all due respect, to even clean the streets of Freetown. The mayor of Freetown, for example, has launched um, um, a, a, a Freetown, a transformed Freetown project, and we all see that, um, as I speak, Freetown has not been transformed in any shape or form. So the council does not even have the technical capability or the manpower to clean the streets, not to talk of um, having the technical capacity to issue building permits and stuff. So you will ask the mayor if um, her current team at the Freetown City Council has the technical or manpower capacity to issue building permits. So that is one of the major problems. So it, it, where we go ju to just before point, you continue, yeah. forgive me, Abdul Fonti, just before you continue, forgive me for cutting you short there. Um, talking about capacity of the councils, um, the mayor mentioned when you talk about devolution of functions, you do not just devolve um, functions or resources, but you also devolve um, staff. People, I mean, for, for example, the technical person who is um, capacitated to issue building permits in the Ministry of Lands could either go to the Freetown City Council or any of the councils across the country to um, work with the council or still be there and still doing the work. So I, 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 is that really about capacity? It is not as simple as you are putting it, Samuel Wise. Go for ahead. example, if um, certain functions of AYV are devolved to Star TV, that doesn't mean that the staff of AYV should move on to Star TV. Those functions are devolved because um, they believe or Star TV should be able to handle those functions. That is why they are devolved in the first place. So that was the point I was trying to make, that um, uh, where, um, where we got to this country, where... And, um, Fonte, are you there with us? Yes, wise. Good morning once again. Yeah, we, are, we do apologize for that break um, there. But quickly, um, you were responding to the issue of um, devolving the function of permit issuance to the um, local councils and them not having the capacity or ability to do the work. And um, we talked about the dynamics of having... Um, a function devolved, I mean, not just with the resources, but also with personnel? Yes. Um, so basically what I was saying is that um, as a nation in 2004, we were definitely not ready to devolve the functions of building permits, for example, to the Freetown City Council. So that was why I felt um, so bad while why listening to the attempts to politicize an issue of national um, importance. Because um, you would also even want to ask the question that um, this act, we are not talking about act that was passed to devolve the function during the presidency of retired Brigadier Julius Madabio. This act was passed in 2004. This means that um, the, the, the political party that the mayor is, is, is representing currently which is the APC, had 11 years in power opportunity to, to, to make this process possible, to devolve these functions. But then they did nothing with regards to that. So and, for the mayor and, to start to... to and to, to, and, and, to and, and, just, and just quickly, Abdul Fonsi, the APC was kicked out um, because they did not, I mean, meet the expectations of Sierra Leoneans. And um, your government came in with the promise of a new direction. 
and of course as contained in the manifesto it's promised the devolution of those functions and um exactly. true to the word um a press release was issued in 2019 devolving all of those functions but then the ministry of lands um according to the mayor um said no they are not going to devolve the issuance of building permits so why was that decision made by the ministry when the government um in general agreed and even issued a statement that all those functions have been devolved so two things. The most important one is that there is no evidence and there is no fact to the claim that the Ministry of Land is refusing to devolving functions to the council. Ministry of Land not even get that power there to say what the mayor is saying is the position of the Ministry of Land. The simple point the Ministry of Land is making is that let us start where we should start. Provide the technical um, uh, um, resources, provide the technical manpower as Eastern City Council so that we know that you are ready for these functions to be devolved. And even at this time when the, the ministry is waiting for the council to put forward a comprehensive strategic plan as to how to devolve these functions, I tell you for sure that the Eastern City Council is already issuing building permits. And in most of these disaster prone areas that you are seeing, if you ask these people that are claiming to have building permits in those areas, those are building permits that are being issued out by the Free Town City Council. Are these claims and factual? The are these claims factual, Fonsi? And then secondly, um, as you rightly said, um, all of these problems were there during the APC, and that was why the third period that you lost matter bill was voted to solve these problems. So now let me tell you, what um, the current government is doing to solve this problem. Quickly. First and most importantly, as I said, now we have realized that we were not even ready in 2004 as a nation to devolve set functions to the Free Town City Council. So now we are even looking at legal reforms. And one of the acts has been passed already in Parliament, which is the National Land Commission. So the functions of, of, of building permits, for example, will not be devolved to the Free Town City Council. So now there has to be a review of the Local Government Act of 2004, because now that you have the National Land Commission that has been passed, which has um, some of its functions, um, the issuance of building permits, those functions are now going to be taken again from the Free Town City Council back to the National Land Commission, which will have the technical and professional expertise to be able to issue building permits. And now in the Ministry of Lands also, under the leadership of Dr. Tura Senesi, we now have standard operating procedures. The way we used to issue out building permits in the past is no longer the way we are issuing out building permits. So now if you go to the Ministry of Lands, we will issue for any disaster-prone area. No one will tell you that he currently has building permit from the current administration at the Ministry of Land um, uh, um, to, to, to construct a house in a forest reserve area, for example, in a water catchment area, for example, in a disaster prone area, for example. So these are the current steps that we are taking. Unlike okay. the Free Town City Council that prefer to play politics when they, they, they had all of these opportunities, to correct the issues, and then they have not done that. Because it's even a shame for a council that cannot even <laughs> provide market stalls. All right. Stay today we talk about, about street trading. All so, right. Um, look the quarters there. Thank Stay you. Today still dirty. Thank you, you know, very so much, Abdul Fonti. We do not have enough time. There, there, there Unfortunately, we have to hold you there. Thank you very much, Abdul Fonti. Kabia from the Ministry of Lands responding to um, some of the comments made by the mayor of Freetown City, Ivan Akisoya, earlier on in the show.